valve and top of piston kaboom hi guys <laughs> that was perfect <laughs> it totally took me like six tries to nail that down today's video is going to be part three oh, i shouldn't show my nails off they're not that great a shape anymore. They're all busted up and working on teeter tot. Speaking of teeter tot, if you're new to my channel and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about and what I'm on right now, I'm on a stool with wheels and teeter tot is the Audi TT Quattro project car. My channel will let you see behind me. There's a link up above. We'll get you caught up on that car. First things first, I need to replace the cam chain tensioner, which is this guy right here, and mainly the gasket that's underneath it because this was leaking. So I ordered a new chain tensioner, which I have now and basically what this does is it provides tension for the cam chain which is this right here that runs between these two gears that kind of link the two camshafts together. The instructions on how to do this procedure are somewhat vague in the manual. Basically it just gives you an illustrated parts breakdown and it says what the torque procedures are for each component and just special notes on each one of those components. So it should be fairly straightforward. What I'm gonna do is on top of the cam caps, there's two little triangles that point towards the cam gear itself. So I'm going to mark the pin that's directly above. Right there. So that'll give me an idea of how to realign this after I Go ahead and take this stuff apart. So this is the old cam chain tensioner that I just removed from the engine. And this is the brand new one. See the pitting on the very top right here? There's like little dots that's pitting in the top of it. So it was actually good that I changed this because the little guides were starting to wear on it. So now I'm just gonna replace the gasket underneath it and then reinstall this reverse of how I took it apart. <laughs> These tools right here, FYI, I ordered one just in case um, because it does come with a tool right here. It's compressing this brand new one but these things break really easy. So I ordered an extra just in case one of them breaks, I have a backup. And it's done. It only took about an hour to do this. It really wasn't that bad. The one thing that I noticed with doing this is you don't actually have to remove the exhaust cam. You just have to undo the intake cam and then you can get the chain past the end of it and take out the chain tensioner, which is good to know because that means you wouldn't have to take the timing belt off if you were doing this. You could leave the timing belt on since that goes to the exhaust cam with the big gear on it and that can be left alone. So this really is not that difficult of a job. The cam chain tensioner did come with a gasket that has some like blue RTV type stuff. I guess it probably gets sticky with heat already on there. But I did also include a tiny film of the right stuff sealant also on there. Just super, super thin coating just in case. So all I got left to do now is put my new valve cover gasket on and then like down here in the corners where there's like really harsh kind of changes in the gasket surface, especially like on bends and stuff, I'm going to apply a thin bead of that right stuff uh, RTV, as well as down here in that little kind of dip by the exhaust cam, again on the back sides over there. And then I can put the valve cover back on and I'll be done. With it. And it's the next day. So late last night when I was about ready to wrap things up, work on the car, I last minute decided to go to the auto parts store and I grabbed a paint of, a paint? I grabbed a can of paint. <laughs> and I got some low gloss black and I did the valve cover in a low gloss black. It was bothering me too much to just leave it the way it was because even after cleaning it, it still looked like crap. So you can't see it underneath the engine cover, but I shot it with the black paint just to clean it up a little bit and make it look a little bit nicer, I guess. I don't know. Hello. <laughs> 
I don't know, I think it came out all right considering it's just cheap spray paint. Doesn't look too bad. I really wish I would've did the wrinkle finish, but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be hidden underneath the engine plastic. Anyway, I'm gonna take some of my right stuff sealant and uh, make sure I don't put it in the wrong places. <laughs> Get it? Right stuff in the wrong places? You can pull an innuendo out of that if you'd like. <laughs> I guess there really isn't no wrong place. Okay, new gasket, new gasket. Small bead of RTV should be on the following places. The four corner joints, overhead cam shaft radius contours, where the valve cover makes contact of semicircular plug radius. <laughs> Dude, I am so happy I painted that valve cover. It looks so good. It, oh, I'm so happy. Tell myself it's raining out today and it's cloudy and that just made me want Dunkin Donuts so I'm getting Dunkin Donuts because I don't know that's just what you do when it's cloudy and gray and rainy out oh, I'm wet. Um, all I got left to do on the lower half of the engine is the fan switch which I keep saying I'm gonna replace the two couplings on the lower half of the intercooler and then I can go straight over to the timing belt Old sensor, and then new sensor. Where, where's your hole? Where's your hole? I know I'm gonna catch hate for using the adjustable wrench, but that thing is 27 millimeters, and I don't have a deep well 27 millimeter socket or a 27 millimeter wrench. I don't have anything that goes that high. Like, I think the biggest I have is 24, and then all my sockets of that size are shallow. So I have to use the adjustable. Sometimes, you just, you don't have a choice. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? That is disgusting. And I thought the driver's side was bad. I can't believe all the oil that came out of this intercooler. That's crazy. Definitely gonna need to get an oil catch can. I probably should get a new turbo for this thing too. Cause, uh, well, I don't know. I need one, but it still builds boost. So for now, it's fine. But that's a ton of oil. I think that's more than just a bad PCB valve. That is a lot of oil. This thing stinks. S smells weird. All right, whatever. <laughs> And then, just like that, somebody turned off the rain and the sun came out. <laughs> what? Some of you get it. <laughs> it's sunny out now. That's good. I miss the rain. Like the deserts miss the rain. <laughs> I'm just so punny today. A little longer than a few minutes later. I've now been fighting with this timing belt for two hours and I still cannot get it on. I've tried everything. I've tried taking the belt tensioner off, putting the belt on, and then putting the tensioner on, which doesn't work, because then I can't get the hardware into the tensioner. And then when I put the tensioner on there, it also pulls it off by like two teeth on the crank. So I try like advancing the crank two teeth and then putting it on there, and then it still ends up out of whack. So I've had the belt like on and off probably a dozen times now. timing belt on there I I think it's perfect I think 
What I ended up doing is I did the exact opposite of the Bentley service manual. That one, it says to start down your crank and work your way up to the cam last. And what I ended up doing was I put my belt on on the cam, the water pump, the tensioner pulley, and then at the very end, I got it down to the crank and I got it like started and then I turned the engine over and it fed the belt onto the crank pulley and then I just kept doing it more and more and then I kind of pushed on the belt a little bit and tapped on the belt and then I got it to finally rotate and like pull itself on. I pulled all the spark plugs too so that would be really easy for me to turn over. I have to turn the engine over two full rotations and make sure that this still lines up. These zip ties right here are an indication I screwed up. So, so I have my timing belt zip tied to the cam pulley right now and the marks are perfectly lined up on the crank pulley with, or sorry, the cam pulley with the valve cover. But the mark on the actual crank itself is just slightly off about a quarter of an inch, which is about the spacing of a tooth on the crank. So I can pull it back off now and move it a tooth, but at least I got it locked down up above on the um, cam pulley. So that'll help me since I'm doing this by myself. There we go. All right, so now all I should have to do is turn this guy. Dude, that was nerve wracking. I thought I hit valve and top of piston, kaboom, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was the zip tie snapping up above, but I got it. <laughs> Pretty sure it's lined up now. I'm gonna pull my zip tie off and do to two full rotations and we shall see. It's amazing that I have such healthy long hair considering I never put my hair in a hair tie <laughs> and it's always getting dragged around and caught in creepers and I abuse my hair. I don't really abuse my hair. I take really good care of my hair but it gets the crap kicked out of it when I'm working on cars. So, all right. That stuff is off. I very well could just delete all this and edit this video in a way that would make it look like I did this perfect and like, oh wow. But now that I just moved it a tooth, it's off even more. So it was correct before and I was just being too like overly critical of how far off the tooth was because now that I moved it in the correct direction, it's like way, way off in the opposite direction. This is kind of embarrassing. This is really embarrassing. If I would just mark the damn thing to begin with, I wouldn't be in this boat. But, oh well. Hey, at least I'm real about this and showing you guys this. Mark your damn belts when you're doing your timing belt. <laughs> Don't just pull the old belt off and not mark it. So I got the timing belt back on there and I put it back to the tooth that it was on before. It looks like it's off half a tooth, but that's just the way the belt is gonna be until it's broken in. So it is set on the correct tooth now after moving it a tooth and seeing it was way obvious when it was actually a tooth off. But I got something special because Aaron's here. Hello, now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, this everyone's seen, him, seen you in the comment section. That's where everybody knows me from <laughs> is the comment section. So it's 802 Garage in the comments. I don't have merch on, but a picture an 802 Garage logo right here instead of Brooklyn <laughs> and then you'll get the idea. So. Yeah, he drove all the way, he, well he went from Vermont, then he went to Colorado first, right? So I went to Ohio, then Colorado, then yeah. So he went to a bunch of places, got to Colorado, hung out with um, the Boosted Boys yep, for like Boosted a week. Boys. Yep, I got a ride in Trevor's Supra from Motion Auto TV, which was just mental, because it's like a 600 horsepower 2JZ, what, what's not the love? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was really cool. Um, and now I'm here, which is awesome, and Sarah's awesome, so. So yeah, so now he's gonna hang out 
my goal tonight is I'm gonna keep putting in work and just get this motor mount on and button up the rest of the car. Hopefully I can finish this up tonight. Say hi. She's back. I am back. This is the hardest part. I'm really glad to have Aaron here to help out because getting this engine mount back up in here, like he's raising and lowering the engine and I'm trying to fish it in here. And it is a huge pain because there's like this part that sticks out right here that has to clear past these pulleys, but it's not as easy as just pushing it sideways because the actual space you have to work with, as you can see, is not much. So it's like a stupid puzzle trying to figure this out. All three bolts actually on that dumb motor mount. So it's the home stretch. I look like crap. It's like what, 1.30 in the morning right now. And he's been really tired because he's been driving all day and I've been out here working since 10 o'clock this morning. Sarah always looks good, right? Leave a comment below if you agree with me. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Thanks though. It's 2.20 in the morning, Sunday right now. And well, if you're watching this in the future, you probably could care less what day it is. But for all you watching it in the present, you can tell I'm tired, I'm rambling. Anyway, <laughs> everything is put back together on the car. Thanks to Aaron, he helped me out a ton trying to get stuff like routed and stuff that just takes two people to do, so. Basically, that was moral support is what she said. <laughs> you helped out a lot, especially with the engine mount. All I have left to do now is put the front bumper on thankfully, but the last video I did, I asked you guys to try to guess what the box was on top of the front bumper for the Audi, and one of you actually guessed what it is, is da da da. I think we tried to do every of this the opposite of <laughs> I'm so yeah, it already worked. I'm so tired. It's a RS style grill, if that means anything. It's honeycomb, so the good thing about it being honeycomb is the bottom of the bumper is honeycomb, but the top of it isn't. So this part is going to match, and I do have a holder for the Audi rings. I'm keeping the Audi rings on there because I like them. There's not gonna be a part four to this video. The car is put back together. The bumper is sitting on the front of the car, but I gotta swap over the Audi grill, like the logo onto the new grill and like align the bumper properly, make sure it's lined up and then bolt it on there. And then I gotta bleed the coolant still. So it's already almost three o'clock in the morning and I gotta get up early in the morning to edit this for you guys to watch when you're watching it. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm saying, I'm so tired. I'll see you guys in another video, bye.